Hi, this is Ed Tracy with OCTracy.com, and I am in Indiana, and I am just excited to be here because I think we found in our search for your health, I think we have found the solution to access to care. And I'm here with Tiffany Turner, and Tiffany Turner um, is the head nurse practitioner here. And Tiffany, tell us uh, a little bit about uh, your clinic here and um, a little bit about yourself. Let's start with your background and your professional background and, okay. and then how you came to be at, at this facility. Well, actually, I started out as an ICU nurse and went back to school to pursue my, my vision of being a nurse practitioner. Um, always thought I wanted to help people, but felt like I had more to offer than what I could give them at the bedside in a hospital setting. Um, so after I went back to school, I went to the emergency room and practiced in the emergency room setting, um, but found that multiple patients were coming in, uninsured, didn't have the capability to see their regular physician, so they were utilizing emergency medicine um, as a bridge to that medication gap. Um, so what we did is Dr. Patel um, and myself and um, Kim Massey, who's a, a PA, um, and some other beings got together and we talked about what would be the greatest thing for people that they could come to a place and get their health care needs met mm -hmm. um, while not having to incur lots of cost and what they go to a physician for. Most physicians, their co if they have no insurance, their pay can be out of pocket, can be anywhere from eighty to one hundred and fifty dollars just to see those physicians. Not that um, we don't want them to see their physicians, because we do want them to have a rapport with the physicians. But if they're in a cost constraint, um, we have felt like that we have bridged that gap a little bit. They come into this clinic. Um, the companies provide the services um, for them to come here, and then what happens is they have no copay. Um, they can see a provider here. Um, we see things for very um, basic management. We see things that are acute sinusitis. We see things that are um, very basic, new onset of illness. Um, we monitor labs here. We can manage chronic disease such as diabetes, high blood pressure, thyroid problems. Um, and then we also provide them with their medications while they're here. Um, they are here as a one-stop shop. Is there a shop. charge to that? No charge for medications. Um, we have common generic medications. Mm -hmm. We don't have all medications. We can write prescriptions, obviously, if they are on a medication that they have taken for a long time and it works well for them, um, and they have the funds to get those medicines, we can give them prescriptions to go to their local pharmacy and get those, but we do have a lot um, and a, a vast variety, if you will, of medications here that they can get on a regular basis that is free. We give them a 90-day supply when they leave, um, so they don't have to leave and go to the pharmacy. They don't have to have another cost that's incurred when they go there. So this is just above the penicillins and the... We have, we have penicillin... I mean, we have lots of antibiotics. We have, you know, not just penicillin. We have cephalosporins. We have, um, you know, macrolides. We have all different kinds of antibiotic types. Mm -hmm. We also have lots of blood pressure medications. We have the classes of ACE and ARBs and um, calcium channel blockers. We have diabetes diuretics that are loop diuretics and you know we have the different classes but we don't have every drug that's out there obviously we would have rooms and rooms and rooms full of medication um, so we try to target what is generic we try to, so it's cost savings for the company um, but we also try to target things that are common so if it's something that's out there that is very common those are the medications that we have here and typically a person that would, you'd write a script for uh, in the, in the regular medical world, they take that, they have to go to their uh, they go pharmacy, to, right. they pay a copay at the pharmacy, right. they, it would take two hours out of their day. Right. Yeah, so they're paying, they, they go to their doctor, they pay a copay. They wait for the doctor, then they see the doctor, then they go to the pharmacy, they pay a copay. They wait for the pharmacy. You know, so it's a very monotonous type of procedure. What we're trying to eliminate is we're trying to get them basically a one stop shop. Mm -hmm. They come here, they pay no copay, they see a physician, with, and we are trying to be very um, efficient with scheduling. We aren't scheduling three, four, five patients in a 15 minute so block. So that waiting room, we when never, I came in, yeah. There was nobody sitting in it. 
and that's the goal. And there were people in, in the, the examining room. Yes, we never have any, we try to not have people wait for any more than two minutes, if that max, and that's just to transition them from the waiting room into the room to be seen by the physician. So what's and the catch? I mean, here we have, you don't have to wait to be seen, you get your prescription filled for most generic medicines, mm -hmm. Uh, there's no copay for the prescription or the or the visit here to the mm -hmm. clinic. Mm -hmm. um, why hadn't anybody thought of this before? Well, I don't know, but it, we, we love it, and the patients love it um, because we're saving their time. Your time is just as, as valuable as my time. So respecting your time, respecting that you have other things to do with your day um, than to run all over town is very is very important. Um, so you get people in, out, and back to work in, out, back to work, um, they feel better, they don't feel like they've been inconvenienced, or most of them say they haven't been inconvenienced. We do immunizations here, so if you come in for a regular medication check and you need your flu shot, we can do it all right then and there. We don't have a separate day that you have to come back and do a flu shot. On the flu shot, you see signs at all the pharmacies around that say, get your flu shot, be at $20. Free. And it's free here. Free. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we're talking about a model that a contract, your clinic, signs a contract with a county or a business or that are self-insured. Yes. And so this does not replace their regular insurance. Right. This actually is like first-level care where people would come here rather than go to the emergency room. Right. They would come here rather than wait to be seen by an internist with that they normally would wait two or three weeks to see right. um, and, they, and they get immediate attention, which has to prevent a lot of things from getting worse in my opinion. Well, and that's that's kind of where the goal started. We, didn't, we, we wanted to catch people before they realized they had hypertension. Most of the time people come in in their you know, 40s and 50s and say, oh, I've been feeling these symptoms for many years, but now I'm just realizing it. Mm -hmm. Well, what we're trying to do is we're trying to be proactive. We're trying to do labs ahead of time. We're trying, you know, when you come in to see me, I'm going to say, hey, let's do a well visit. And they, say, even though you're sick today, maybe in a couple weeks when it's convenient for you, you come on in, we're going to do a well visit. Mm -hmm. In that well visit, we're going to do lots of labs, and we're going to look at your CBC, your CMP, we're going to do your thyroid levels, we're going to check to see, you know, are your kidneys functioning like mm -hmm. they should. Um, How much is, is your, the lab cost? Nothing. It's all free. And the nicety about those things, too, is we're not trying to take anything from their regular physicians. If their regular physicians want to see those results, we would love to share those with them because they're the experts. And if we find things that need to be addressed, they can stay here and we will help them through that. But if it is something that needs a specialist, if it's something that needs one-on-one -on -one interaction with the physician, we are happy to give them all their information. It isn't like... It's and not you a, put their medical records on computers so you can the, easily medicine, share yeah. with e uh, other specialists mm -hmm. or cardiologists. Right, or, right. And we like to give them all the information that we can. Sometimes um, we have found in the healthcare system that people don't like to share the information that they've obtained. Mm -hmm. um, our goal is to share as much as we can because we want everybody to be healthy. If we take on the model of health and wellness versus sick, then we are preventing things, we're treating things on a proactive of course level. Of you're sharing with permission of the patient. Absolutely. We don't share any, obviously. We show, everything is HIPAA bound, yeah. um, and we do not share anything that is not, the patient doesn't know. Because ultimately, don't I own my own medical Absolutely. records? Absolutely. That is yours, and it's nobody else's to look at or to peruse or okay. to find anything out about. So. Um, well, tell me a little bit about uh, yourself as far as your job here. What, what does a typical day look like for a nurse practitioner here? Um, it's great, actually. Um, basically, what you see, we see anything. We see children up to um, geriatric population. Um, what happens is the families, can they can come in. If, if you have a sick one at home today, you can call in and have a same-day sick visit, which means you can call at 8 o'clock in the morning, and typically we um, can get you in that same day. Mm -hmm. um, and so what you can do is you call in, we provide you a time that's convenient for you, and you bring your kiddo or you bring yourself or you come on in. 
Um, some days we have lab visits, so you may come in and just have labs drawn. You won't see the provider necessarily that day, but every lab that's done here is called back by one of the providers that's here. So a nurse isn't calling you, you're not getting a letter in the mail, we're personally calling you and telling you, hey, this is what I've looked at, this is what I think is going on, this is what we need to do, do we need to change medications, do, what do we need to do to help you get what you need. Um, sometimes it's just everything is status quo, everything looks good, um, and we're, we follow the regimen set by CMA. It's all evidence-based medicine, it's all practice-based that's done by research. We're not saying Tiffany Turner said this is what needs to happen or Dr. Patel says this is what needs to happen. This is all evidence-based research. Um, and so what, um, what we want to do is, so on an average day we may see 10 patients or we may see 20 patients, depending on um, what's going on. We have some scheduled patients that are scheduled on a daily basis. Um, that come in just for routine medication updates and checks and blood pressure checks. So you're serving the county population of employees. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing 10 to 20 patients a day out of a uh, county employee pool of about 500 yes. employees here. Yes. This clinic is actually built right into the county facility. That's correct. So people just walk outside and come around from the front door. That's correct. So it's convenient for the county employees. Right. This is an intriguing thing. Talking to Dr. Patel and he says, someone calls at 8 o'clock at night, and my doctor said, go to the emergency room. What do you tell them? We can either see them here, or we can just give them some advice over the telephone. If it's something that needs to be seen right now, we've brought them in. We'll see them at night time. Um, that doesn't happen very often. People are very respectful, believe it or not, of, the ser of that service. Um, obviously, there are some people that things happen to, and you're like, oh man, you know, and if it is an emergency and it warrants emergency right. medicine, we'll give them that information. Go to the emergency room. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, it's not anything that we can't help what about them with. about a baby's fever? Uh... Right. A lot of, I mean, new moms have issues and concerns mm -hmm. and questions when they're having a 103 fever. Most likely, it's an ear infection when it occurs mm -hmm. at 2 a.m. But they don't know that. They've never had a new baby at 2 a.m. So we give them a little bit of advice, things that, you know, some troubleshooting, if you will. Um, we have, you know, there's 24-hour services for everything. There's 24-hour service for your computer. There's 24-hour okay. service for everything. So why wouldn't we provide some 24-hour service? And Dr. Um, Patel told me that, uh, let's say mother has three children, single mom, mm -hmm. works for the county. Mm -hmm. It's 2 a.m. and you get that phone call and... You say, well, we, we can even come out and see you. Yes, and we have done that. We have gone to um, home visits before and, you know, and said, we'll help you, you know, you so stay there. Mother calls, she's a single mom, she's got three or four kids, her little baby is sick, she's a county employee, she's got work the next day. In a normal situation, with that fever, she calls her doctor, doctor says, bring it to the emergency room. She's going to go to the emergency room. She'll be there till 5 in the morning with that baby. She's had to dress all her kids up, bring them in, they've got school. Right. In that situation, you guys will actually go to the house mm -hmm. and treat the baby and see, unless it is a true emergency, right. where then you'd refer them. Right. How long would it take for you guys to get to that? I mean, Person's home. not not long. I mean, the town Within is an hour. yeah. I mean, less than an hour, and mm -hmm. usually we're there less than ten to fifteen minutes. I mean, it doesn't take any time just to hear the mom's history, hear what's going on with the baby, and take care of the situation. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have the meds with us at all times, but mm -hmm. a lot of times we can call something in right then and there, or we can if we can anticipate with on the telephone, we can take things with us mm -hmm. as we go. Um, you know, it's just, it's kind of a, everyone is a little different. We treat everybody on an individual basis. Um, and that doesn't happen very often. That is, again, that is not the norm, but it is the exception. We are, we do not want to be the typical doctor's office. We are trying to set ourselves apart from what has been happening in the past, because obviously things that have happened in the past haven't always worked. What kind of comments do you get from patients who come in that you can afford it? Um, you know, the number one thing is cost is a, is a huge barrier. Um, and maybe so access to care has Access been. to care has been a phenomenal mm -hmm. response. Um, even people that have insurance, even people that 
budget for going to the physician's office, they still find this more convenient. Mm -hmm. um, one, because of the location that it's at, but secondly, because that they don't have to spend money that is not necessary. Um, you know, for instance, on my health care plan, if I go to my physician, it is going to cost me $45 or $50 for a copay. You know, I am a provider. I know usually what I need, and I hate to waste fifty dollars mm -hmm. when I could go to something like this that would be ultimately free. A lot of county employees, government employees, don't get paid a lot of money. No, no. They maybe get paid in some districts uh, every two weeks, some once a month. Right. And so they're in that third week of their paycheck. Right. Um, and instead of going and being seen because they're sick, they saying, I gotta wait until I get paid again. Right. Or I can't get my prescriptions. I'll, I'll go and be seen, but I can't get my prescriptions for another week and a half right. because so I don't they, have they, the money. They, yes. It just gets worse. It's a cycle. It just continues. It's, it's just a downward spiral, basically. So what we've been able to do is we've been able to cut illness off at, at the forefront, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, we've been able to give people what they need at the time that they need the service mm -hmm. versus them waiting and being hesitant on coming to the facility. And we've really just um, opened things up for them and, you know, given people in this area um, things that they haven't been able to obtain from their regular position. Tell me about the work environment. It is very easy, <laughs> laid back. Um, you know, we have two or three staff members here at a time, um, and it is it's as seamless as you can make it. Um, they come in, it's very, very similar to an atmosphere of a physician's office without, um, I feel like there's not a lot of stress here. I don't mm -hmm. feel like there's the hustle and bustle of the office. You're not having to see a, a thousand patients a day. No. The expectation is that we manage what we can do. Mm -hmm. So if we if we see sometimes 25 patients, that may be flu shots all day long. Mm -hmm. It may be, you know, um, very simple sinus issues. But sometimes patients are very complex. They come in with a multitude of problems. They may come in with high blood pressure, they may come in with diabetes, they may come in with uh, thyroid issues, all on the same patient, which is not uncommon, but those patients require a little more time. And the other piece of it is we really try to educate the patients while they're here. Um, and that sometimes goes by the wayside when you're very busy. Mm -hmm. um, so our expectation is if it seems like it's going to be a complex um, issue or something that needs a little further um, information, we open that time slot up to maybe a 30 to 40 minute time slot where we can spend some time with them and they don't feel like they're rushed in and out of here. And they're able to ask questions and they're able to take information we give them um, pamphlets and flyers and different types of things for their for their disease process that then they can go home and read as well and if they have any other questions. So you'll manage uh, chronic illnesses, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. diabetes mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, the community, when you go out in the community, because taxpayers are paying for this. Yes. Uh, do you hear any feedback, negative, positive, or from? Um, it's been very. Taxpayers? I mean, it's been very good. Um, there is another clinic in town that actually is for the school corporation. That is the same model mm -hmm. um, that Dr. Patel started, um, and that clinic has been around longer. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, what we've done for those people is that we have saved them a tremendous amount of money. Um, and in doing that, um, the patient, the the staff of the schools, one, they're very appreciative because we are saving where schools are being hit with tax cuts and different things. All of them are very appreciative. Mm -hmm. um, and they like the service. They actually have um, the ability to go in and schedule their own appointments. And they can schedule them on their planning periods. So, and we make it an effort to get them in and out within a 20 minute time frame so that they can get back to their school day. They haven't missed any work. They've had to sign out from their facility um, and let someone know that they were not in the building, but they haven't missed any work. And so they can come whenever their planning period is. When they say, I'm going to the clinic. It's all good. Their principal probably goes, well, that's good because I know they're going to be back here. Right, well, they're coming back and then, you know, because 
teachers work Monday through Friday, eight to five or eight to three. Most of them are, are not out at three o'clock. They're mm -hmm. doing lesson plans. They're doing yeah. other things that they, they have to do. That time, yeah, and, and, they yeah, their that. their preparation time is so not a coaching. Right, doing, right. Yeah. So the only time they have to go to the position is on Saturday and Sunday. Well, what position do you know that's open late on Saturday? Not very many. No. They're usually closed at eleven or twelve. So to get one of those, if open, yeah, if open at all, and to get one of those prime slots isn't good. And then on top of it, there none of them are open on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So then they're going to school sick. Are they contaminating or cross-contaminating? Right. You know, if the kids go to school sick, they're coming. Well, preventative you know, care in the school system is Yeah, I mean, and so, it's, so it's, been very, it's been very good. So um, with this clinic not being open as long, um, it's, we haven't had as much feedback mm -hmm. that we've had with the other clinic, but what we do here is people love what we're doing for them. Mm -hmm. um, and as the exposure gets out there and as more and more people come here, um, it's just been an overwhelming, you know, why, where's this been? Where, why hasn't anybody done this? So I asked the uh, commissioners, I said, all I've heard is positive. Mm -hmm. What's the downside? And, and the, what the president of the commission said, there is no downside. My only aspect is, why didn't we do it before now? Mm -hmm. That's the downside. Why Why didn't we do this cost savings? Why didn't we make this as convenient as possible before now? That makes Dr. Patel and the rest of you way ahead of your peers for thinking out of the box mm -hmm. and coming up with an access to cure model mm -hmm. that's been discussed in this country for 50 years mm -hmm. and no one's ever applied this kind of model. Mm -hmm. I think it's terrific. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to mm -hmm. us and and uh, I'm sure uh, people back in Georgia, where I'm, where I'm from, uh, will be excited to hear about uh, an answer for them as well. Yeah.